Hello. So I thought that after I'd done the um, design process, I filmed the design process of Moonglade tea, the Moonglade tea, I thought I would do it again with a few other designs. So at the time of recording this, Moonglade tea is in testing and I am starting to work on a design that's a collaboration with Skeen and the Stitch um, and it's for her advent and it's for her shawl. We've discussed that we wanted an asymmetric shawl but that was it and the theme is Georgian so I have been looking up different things. I thought we would go from start to finish with it again um, hopefully, hopefully you like that sort of video. Um, so this is for this shawl because currently it has no name whatsoever it's not even in real existence it's just a few different ideas in my head um so i thought we'd work through them and you can see First thing I did, you can see Moonglade is there, the Moonglade tea, and over here is that's the most ardently sock, and then there's another sock behind which I'm yet to work on. I'm about to start after I've done this, but this was my idea for the asymmetric shawl for the advent. So these little triangles that you can see, these are meant to be a pattern, a certain pattern. Um, just coming in and obviously you've got the central double decrease coming up the centre. So I am going to be swatching some ideas. So this is the first swatch. So obviously it's going to be garter. Um, and then, excuse my nail varnish, it's terrible. So I've got this side is continuous in the garter, but this has got like a wedge coming in. And I was doing like a feather and fan type. Um, so we'll see how it works. I'm going to continue that wedge and have a look. Right, so this is where I am. So we've got this feather and fan type. It's really hard to show you on one hand. Um, feather and type, fan type wedge um, coming in. And then it's playing the other side. But I'm not sure. I might work a bit further up and see what I think. But now it's in knitting it doesn't look like it did in my brain so mm, I'm not so sure about it yeah okay so I didn't like the um, shape of this coming out like as a triangle like how I did on the sketch um, so I changed it to a feather and fan pattern not the normal one it's slightly different it's got little garter bits in between them. Um, I changed it to that, just going across, and that would just be an idea. They'd be a bit thicker um, with garter. So that's one idea I've got. So the last time I spoke to you, I was talking to you about this idea um, with the different patterns coming in. But after I'd like thought about it, I thought it was a bit too... Um, like a little bit too of a modern sort of look for a Georgian feel. So I've had a few little ideas of different patterns. Um, and then I was doing this one. I did this, but I don't like this um, star bit in the middle, if you can see that very well. I have got a new idea, which I'm about to do. So I'm going to pull this bit out so I'm not, I'm not um, confused with this and um, put the new idea here, which I think could be the one. It's a bit of a combination between this one and this one. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I said I had an idea and this is it. So obviously it's not blocked. Um, but this is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna try it again without these eyelets or I might do the eyelets, it's going really weird with the colour, that's the colour there. It, I might do the eyelets further down and not so close up to the actual pattern. It looks a little bit busy on there at the minute but I think it'll be a lot better when it's blocked and these chunks are going to be thicker and these these might be thicker at, at parts. Um, but yeah, so this, this is 
it, I think. Um, but I'm just going to swatch it again without the eyelets. I'll keep this one and do another swatch and see what I think. But yeah, there you go. So far, so good. So this is the final result. So this is the one without eyelets in, which I said I was going to try. And then, sorry, you might be able to hear my cat eating biscuits. And this is the one with eyelets. And if I can get them both in together, show my messy desk. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with one with the eyelets, but um, just organize them a bit better so they're not really close to the lace. Um, and take out this gap here. So, yeah. Now our dog's eating biscuits. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna go for. I think that's a bit more Georgian feel. Um, so, this is very crinkly, so I'm not gonna really touch it, but Jess sent me the first 12 of the advent. Um, I'm absolutely in love. This is just beautiful. But these blues in here, I'm just, oh, so good. Um, so yeah, um, first of all, so I'm going to skein these up. I've just took the label off this one and then realised that I hadn't filmed anything. So I needed to film this. So this is number one, which she told me was called Parchment. But then the rest of them haven't got names as far as I'm aware. She might have named them. I don't know. But um, yeah, one to 12. So that I can get, start getting cast on. Do a little swatch. Ooh. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Um, the yarn for the advent shawl arrived today, the first 12. Um, <clears throat> so I've started to think about what I need to be doing for the shawl. Obviously, the design is already done. The issue I have is when to change to the next colour so that all 24 colours are in the shawl. And that's really tricky. <laughs> um, first I thought I could figure out exactly how many rows the shawl will have in it and then divide that by 24. Um, and then that's how many rows each colour would knit. But obviously the first colour is only going to have like the slim triangle. And then as like there's going to be a colour that's at its widest point. So that wouldn't work out right, working out the rows, because some of them, if they're doing really, really long, and it's like, I don't know, 24 rows, say, sorry if you can hear my dog walking about. If it's 24 rows, then go in 24 at the widest point. I don't think that would work. So then I spoke to my friend Jane Burns and asked if she had any bright ideas. Um, and she was saying, I need to get my maths head on. So I'm now thinking to work out the entire yardage of the shawl, which I can do by knitting a swatch. Um, work out the yardage and then divide that by 24. And then I'll have to wait as I knit it. So you're using the same amount from each mini skein, but some some will be big because it's little, it's little rows, so they'll be fatter and then they'll get thinner. It's so hard to figure it out. That's that's where I'm stuck. Um, so I thought I would record this because I keep thinking, I keep thinking, well, why aren't you doing the stitch thing again? Why aren't you working it out by rows again? And then I keep going, because of this. And then I'll forget and go, well, why don't you just do it by rows again? So I thought, <laughs> I'll put it down. <laughs> and then I know why I'm not doing the rows. <laughs> I'm not doing it by rows. I need to do it by weight, I think. Yeah, that's Jane just messaging me. So I'm going to see what Jane says. <laughs>
small. Oh, uh, maybe too small. Yeah. Does it fit you? It's beautiful. <laughs> You're welcome. You're going to colour it in for me? No. Oh. I do. I... So we've got day, sorry, we've got day two done. So we've got day one, and then you can see the blend of day two and then day two. And then I've started blending day three in. So now I'm gonna work day, day three. I'm writing this as I go because it's basically a, a kind of have an idea, but um, I'm kind of working out as I go at the same time. So yeah, I'm gonna start day three now. So it's the summer holidays with school, so I'm getting interrupted a lot. Um, and I have currently, I'm up to day seven so far. Right, but I've been chatting with Jess, I'm skiing in the stitch, and both of us think that these sections need to be thicker, not just, that's two repeats at the minute. So I'm thinking of doing four repeats and getting good chunks of lace in there. So this is now coming out and I'm going to do it again. Um, I've also realised I've been using 16 grams of um, yarn each time before I change to the next one to try and fit all 24 in. Um, but I'm currently on day seven and I'm at the halfway point. Obviously, they're now all this length. Um, so they'll be, they're doing longer rows, which means shorter. Um, <laughs> I can't think of the word. Shorter, like, stripes between changes. Um, but I'm never going to get 24 in. So I've recalculated it all. I've had to work out exactly how many stitches is going to be in the shawl, um, which is a big calculation that I needed a spreadsheet to do. Um, I've calculated that and I've realised that I actually need to drop to 12 grams of yarn per before each change. So that is what I'm about to do. So yes, take one last look at it because it's going out. Here we go again. Um, pulling this out and then I'm gonna cast it on again and um, I'll make these bigger. And then that should be the one and change to 12 grams per color. point I actually stopped filming. Jess had got sick and the yarn was delayed and so when it did arrive I had to really push it and obviously like you've seen the design wasn't properly set in my mind so I did a lot of frogging as well. Um, I did photograph every single mini scene that went into it um, so that when the pattern went out the pattern originally went out every single day for the 24 days and this would be the photo that went with. So I got the 12 photos done and then I had to wait again for the rest of the yarn to arrive. So it is late in <clears throat> late in the evening. It's about, what time is it? Half past seven. Um, and I'm only just getting a chance to show you this, but I have to um, crack on. So um, <clears throat> unfortunately the lighting isn't perfect for you. 
this is 13 to 24 of the Advan. And um, I'm going to get started. I'm going to get these um, balled up. I'm just going to wind them up with my hand. It takes too long to mess about with the skein. With the Swift and the ball winder. So, a bit of crinkling. So, at the minute... <clears throat> I haven't filmed for a while, I've been popping four oars in. This is where we are. I haven't seen this for a little bit. I've been busy with other things. And, um, so I've got some kids in the street. Yeah, I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful, that is my favorite. Number 12, <clears throat> if you get this calendar. I've got it in the wrong way around. <laughs> well done, Kelly. Day 12 is my favourite. But yeah, so I'm going to get cracking with this one. So again, there is no um, video footage of these colours going in. Um, Jess had, had basically, her kids had started um, nursery and school and they were just picking up every single bug going and everything was really delayed. I also had other work on. At this point, it was stress, very, very stressful. Um, I also am missing day 23. I have no idea what happened to the day 23 photo. <laughs> So I just took the uh, second from last photo, which is day 23, and I have day 24. I have very bad nail varnish, I apologise. I usually do in these videos, so. <laughs> um, yeah, day 24, I'm about to unravel, ball that up. This is day 23, get day 24 in and cast this off. I am absolutely loving it. It's huge. It's twisted. I've got all the ends to weave in. But I'll show you it properly once I have done day 24. So today is video day and um, video day, photograph day and it's my worst part of the job, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's a factory right over there, you can probably see it, you can see the roof a little bit through the trees um, where I can hear men uh, going about their day. Um, I just hate it, I hate it. I'm always paranoid someone comes across me, finds me and wonder what the hell I'm doing. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, I've got my hair in a bun, trying to be Georgian. Um, I've gone some. I've done some photos, but some of them look horrendous, absolutely horrendous, which I'll share. Uh, yeah. So I need to go and find a gate to lay the shawl on, so I can get a full length on because I just can't seem to get a wide shot of it. My camera keeps falling over. I'm trying. I'm talking quiet because I don't want anyone to find me. Thought I would completely ruin the illusion of a photo shoot for you. So because I don't want to get caught, I'm, I'm in a summer's dress, right? Because it's the only thing I've got that looks remotely Georgian because it's long. Um, and uh, I've got my winter coat on. I've kept my trousers on and my trainers. And so no one sees the skirt as I'm walking down the road with trousers and trainers. I've done this. <laughs> I swear to God. It's no wonder I don't want to be found because people are going lock me up. <laughs> so um, you can hear the factory. You can see some containers through. It's not the nicest of woods at all. There's a lot of felled trees and they cut a lot down and set fires in here and stuff. I don't know what it's for. Um, there's another felled tree over there. 
I'm out of puff because I'm about as fit as a nine year old. Um, so I'm walking to find the fence. There's lots of really bright autumnal in here, so I thought I would show you because it's really pretty. So many pretty colours. More felt trees. Oh dear. Yeah, I've kind of come a funny way. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I need to duck. Oh, oh no. Uh, okay. This way. <laughs> Alright, now I know where I am. Yeah, there's the factory look. I don't, I think they make, from what I heard when I first moved here, they make parts for buses or something. I don't know. It's just a factory at the end of the village. More fell trees. Oh, is that a fence? Is that some horses there? That might be nice. Oh, look. Okay, so I'll take some photos here. Oh, I'm going to slip in the mud. And, uh, yeah pause because it's really pretty and I've got horses coming to see me. Better not eat the shawl. Oh, coming to the fence of horses. <laughs> yeah, I kind of uh, drew attention. I think they thought they were getting carrots. They all come about from that one over there who knew better. Oh, they're going now. They've realised I've got nothing. They've all had a stroke. And it smells beautifully in equestrian. Oh dear, hello. Oh dear. Yeah. Because I know you love it so much, here's some of the really bad photos that <laughs> I ended up with on that day. Um, yeah, you know, you know, there's always some. <laughs> I mean, that one's not too bad, I suppose, but it's a bit weird. Yeah, that one's beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Um, <laughs> and yes, Wuthering Heights, eat your heart out with the trainers. And then um, and then after these wondrous photos there are the actual ones that made the cut um there wasn't that many to be honest um but yeah these are the ones that made the grade and that's obviously the front cover one the shawl is absolutely stunning the colors were perfect And that is the end of the footage for my shawl. I don't know what happened. I think I accept commissions like way in advance sometimes. Um, and I can plan them in on, I have like a big calendar and I plan them in and everything was fine. But then when Jess got sick, it really slowed that shawl down and that shawl was huge. I also had the DK one to do. And I have one tiny bit of footage of that which is about this much of the DK shawl and me saying um I keep forgetting to film and that's it so I'm not even bothering putting that in the video um I think I just got ultimately stressed all deadlines just hit at once and I was knitting like a crazy woman and designing at the same time and and when you're designing things go wrong you have to frog and it's just it can get stressful if everybody wants you at once. It was nobody's fault. It's just how things go sometimes. She got sick. She couldn't get me the yarn. It's, it's how it goes. But it just all fell way too much together. And by the time December come, I was so burnt out. It was unreal. So the last of the footage ends in October after the photo shoot. After the photo shoot, it went into testing. I had four, that's three, four testers um, testing the four ply version, the fingering version, um, but only one completed. And she pointed out a mistake to me, but because there was only the one person pointed it out because the others didn't get to that point as far as I'm aware, um, because she pointed it out and we between us we couldn't figure out what the issue is we thought maybe she just caused the issue herself which is easily done in that sort of thing um so um it went under the radar and then the pattern was released um I don't normally tech edit a shawl 
I don't normally take out anything other than um, tops because I can't afford to. It's that simple. I go through, I get them tested. But because I was on such a tight deadline, when the test failed, normally if that had happened, I would get it into testing again. But I didn't have the time. I did not have the time at all. So the test failed. Um, it wasn't the test through finished. It was not her fault. We tried really hard. Um, she just she pointed out this mistake then it got released and then later someone who was knitting it found the mistake someone who'd bought the advent found the same mistake and when she found it I went through the pattern again and then it dawned on me what the mistake was and the mistake was basically in day 11 and it threw out the rest of the shawl so I then had to put up a disclaimer about this error in the shawl and there was a fix to it. You just skipped a garter row and it would fix it. Um, and then it went into tech editing. So it didn't get into tech editing until January. Um, it went through extensive tech editing and it's been properly released since. But I have to say that even just the other day, um, Carla from Sonic Create is knitting this shawl and she messaged me and she'd found an error. So, you know, we're all human. <laughs> but I think they're all gone now. <laughs> I've seen them knitted up and people don't seem to have any issue anymore. And um, yeah, it's, uh, oh, it's hard work. It's hard work when, um, when something like kind of feels like that when when there's nothing you can do there's nothing you can do to like sort that situation it just it just keeps on like something's gonna come up but it's now out it is um available on Ravelry and Pave <laughs> and I'm really sorry there's no more footage I've looked and looked and looked but there really isn't it just ends after the photo shoot so um so yeah I thought I'd just stick this on the end we're now in um what what is it now? We're at the end of March, um. So it's been out for three months, and yeah, I just I realised the other day. Oh, I have all that footage, don't I? And I thought I'll put it together. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, yeah, I will do more of these because I've, I've, a few people have asked me to. I will do more. Um, but yes, if you did like the video, please um give it a thumbs up and uh, click the subscribe button if you're not already. And I'd love to see you back here again. But thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.